Good morning, everyone. My name is Franco Vaccarino, and I have the honor and great privilege of serving as the President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Guelph. And I'd like to begin our ceremony by acknowledging the traditional territory on which we are gathered here today. I'd like to acknowledge and thank the diverse Indigenous peoples whose footsteps have marked this territory for centuries. As we are gathered here today to celebrate the achievements of students at the University of Guelph Humber, it is the custom and the practice on occasions such as this to take a few moments for personal reflection. We are truly fortunate to live in a country where we enjoy freedoms, security, and prosperity that so many others in much of the world do not necessarily have. Please join me as we respect the various spiritual and faith traditions represented in this room with a short period of silence to mark the opening of convocation ceremony. And now I officially declare the opening of this convocation ceremony. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, thank you for joining us. The CBC feed We'll show you downtown, <laughs> should you wish to sneak a peek during, the, uh, uh, d during our ceremonies. Well, good afternoon, everyone. That was somewhat limited. Uh, <laughs> we will try again. We have time. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. That was really rather good, wasn't it? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, um, my name is John Walsh, I'm the Vice Provost of the University of Guelph Humber. My very first job is to welcome you, our graduating class, your friends, family, our distinguished guests from both the University of Guelph and Humber College, and most particularly uh, I welcome uh, Franco Vaccarino, Vice Chancellor and President at the University of Guelph, and Chris Whitaker, the President at Humber College. Also uh, with us today, a large number of our faculty and uh, staff and part of the, parts of the leadership executive team at both University of Guelph and at Humber. I don't know if you recall when I first met you four years ago, but when I did meet you, I asked you to do three things. And I also told you I would remind you of them at convocation. The first thing I asked you to do four years ago was to work hard because very, very few things in life can be accomplished without hard work. And you have lived up to that challenge because you are here today. And I invite your family, friends to congratulate you in the traditional manner for keeping your part of that bargain. The second thing that I ask you to do 
was to learn to work in teams because, you know, very, very few things in life can be accomplished alone. And you have lived up to that part of the bargain. You are leaving the University of Guelph Humber as graduates with all the skills and abilities that come with learning how to work together. Congratulations. You may congratulate yourselves. And let me congratulate you because the third thing I asked you to do was to have fun what you're doing. Very, very few things in life can be completed successfully without the sustaining enthusiasm that comes from real interest in what you are doing. Carry that forward into your graduate schools, into your various employers, or if you are an entrepreneur, in your own business. It's a great day today because it marks the end of one part of a journey and the start of another. It's our privilege and has been at the University of Guelph Humber to work with you over four years. Don't leave us behind. Make sure you visit us frequently. And above everything else, enjoy today with your family and friends and with us as we congratulate you on your achievements. It's now a great pleasure for me to introduce Franco Vaccarino, who is the president of the University of Guelph, to bring greetings from the university. Well, thank you very much, John, for that, uh, those wonderful words and that, that kind introduction. Well, welcome all of you again to Convocation. Graduates, this is your big day. You've worked hard. You've persevered and you've made it. Well done. Congratulations. Great work. So now you are preparing for this next step of your journey. Maybe you're making plans for the summer. Maybe you're making plans for the next five years. Or maybe you don't have any plans at the moment or just savoring the moment of graduation. Well, during those recent years, your years here as students, you've learned You've worked and you've lived at one of Canada's most unique and innovative universities and one of Canada's most unique and innovative colleges. At the University of Guelph Humber, you've learned about your chosen areas of study, of course, but likely you've also gained knowledge and understanding about other things, about yourselves, each other, the wider, wider world here on campus and beyond. And along the way, along that journey, you had your plans you definitely had your plans, but at the same time, many of the, th the things that you've learned and experienced have probably been a surprise or unexpected. That unexpected piece presents a challenge for plans. Maybe you took a course to change the way you look at certain things, or perhaps you encountered a professor or someone special in your life whose influence even led you to change your own degree program or other parts of your plans. So there are plans and then there's planning and responding to the unexpected moments. Moments that might just be opportunities. Now don't get me wrong, having a plan is very, very important. But a plan is static. It's a point in time. Planning and responding to opportunity is dynamic. It's ever-changing. It's, it's what allows you to keep moving and adapting, adapting your plan as things change around you. And they will definitely change around you. The unexpected will absolutely happen. We live today in a world of unprecedented rapid change with an ever shorter shelf life of knowledge. A shorter shelf life of knowledge as new information continues to accumulate and emerge at an unprecedented pace. Today, how you adapt your planning and respond to the unexpected is really at a premium, including detours or change of direction, and these things matter a great, great deal. Now, during those unexpected moments that cause you pause, it's important to slow down. It's surprising what you notice when you actually slow down in the face of the unexpected. The message really here is really to embrace, to study, and to savor the unexpected, those moments, those surprise moments. And really what I'm talking about here is the process of discovery. Discovery that comes from paying very, very close attention to what you hadn't expected. Now, 
I suspect that we all understand the need to adjust to the unexpected, but how do you prepare or train for that? How do you prepare or train for the unexpected? And that's where we come back to the past few years for each of you here today. One of the unsung benefits of education, I think we don't hear as much as we ought to, is its ability to broaden your lens, to broaden your view of things. That broadened view brings with it a greater mental capacity to accommodate the unexpected. Think about it. The broader the view, the more prepared you are to deal with the unexpected, both good and bad. That broadened view that you have developed here during these last few years is basically your enhanced toolkit. Beyond academics alone, each of you has been provided with opportunities to broaden your capacity in other ways, socially, emotionally, and physically. And during your studies here at Guelph Humber, you've completed hundreds of hours of practical work, experience in the field, and with industry experts. You've gained hands-on experience and developed relationships with others in your area of interest. You now have the tools to prepare and to respond to change, to help you thrive amid inevitable, inevitable uncertainty, and to respond to the unexpected. So as you head out into that wider world, certainly, absolutely take time to plan. And then be open to adapting your plan, even if it means discovering opportunities hidden within the unexpected. And as Kawhi Leonard might say, there's more to come. <laughs> Congratulations, go Raps, all the very best. And now let me take this opportunity to introduce President Whitaker to, to bring remarks. Well, thank you very much, Franco. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Convocation. And yes, this is the only place where you can have more fun than at a Raptors party, right? <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do about that. President Vaccarino, Vice Provost Walsh, honored guests, faculty and staff, family, friends, and especially our graduates, it's my pleasure to bring greetings from Humber to the University of Guelph Humber graduating class of 2019. I've been part of many convocation ceremonies on both sides of the podium. In fact, I got to see my youngest daughter graduate with a master's degree last week, and I'll be shaking a few hands for the remainder of this week as, as Humber goes into full convocation mode. So I share many of the emotions that we're all feeling today. The pride of achievement, the joy of success, and excitement for the new beginnings and abundant possibilities that await the graduates. Before I acknowledge our graduates, let's take a moment to thank those who helped them along the way. From the dedicated faculty and staff, to the family and friends, for that critical moment of support, or providing that comforting feeling that someone always has your back, you've played an important role in helping us get to today. Let's give them all a big round of applause, please. And to our graduates, you did it. You've earned the spotlight you're receiving today. In choosing to study at UGH, you made a wise decision to be part of an innovative partnership between two exceptional post-secondary institutions. You are graduating with a dual credential, combining the strengths and benefits of both college and university. You've worked hard, persevered through challenges, made new friends, hopefully had some fun, and certainly learned a lot about yourself along the way. So my message for you today is to be confident and courageous as you step into a future which will present uncertainties and challenges, but many opportunities as well. You have the skills and knowledge to thrive as adaptable and resilient lifelong learners. Your education is one of the most valuable assets you have, so use it wisely to your advantage and for the benefit of others. And as you reflect on what's next, let me leave you with three thoughts to take away. First, remember to think critically, to question and to challenge what others may accept at face value. You leave here with a strengthened ability to make sense of the world and make the right choices to engage and make a difference for yourself and others, even when it isn't easy. Second, 
As a UGH student, you've been part of a highly diverse and inclusive institution. So embrace diversity in all its forms, from race, religion, culture, sexuality, gender identity, age, to economic status and more. It's up to each of us to acknowledge and seek to understand these differences and find ways to build bridges and establish common ground. Third, find a way to get involved and give back. This can take many forms and can be as simple as paying forward a kindness that was shown to you, volunteering for a good cause, or getting involved in community development at home or abroad. You have so much to give and there are endless opportunities to help improve the lives of others. Everyone here is proud of all you've achieved. You are ready for whatever comes next. Good luck and congratulations, class of 2019. Thank you. So the University of Guelph Humber began in 2002. So we are a relatively young institution. But we're old enough now to really begin to see the, the, full fruits of, the full fruits of our labors and the excellence of our programming. And our next speaker is a great case in point. She was a member of the University of Guelph Humber's first graduating class in 2006. A media studies grad, Ms. Rachel Leck headed to the University of Ottawa for a law degree after she completed her studies here. In, two, in 2015, she joined McCaig Borlack LLP's Ottawa office as a civil litigator in employment, family, child protection, and human rights. In 2018, Ms. Leck was appointed as part-time commissioner of the Canadian Human Rights Commission, a screening and investigative body. In two, since 2014, she's been dedicated to mentoring women, entering the legal profession, and has appeared before the Ontario Court of Appeal, the Superior Court of Justice in more than 20 communities across the province and various administrative tribunals. She, sh she serves as a board member with both a Francophone Adult Literacy Agency and a Women's Shelter and Rape Crisis Centre. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Ms. Rachel Leck. Thank you, President Vaccarino, President Whitaker, Vice Provost Walsh. A special hello to Michael Nightingale, who was the Vice Provost uh, when I started at Guelph Humber and who gave the convocation address on this day for me in 2006. Also to my fellows on the platform, parents and friends, and of course, graduates. I am delighted to celebrate this day with you. It's an important day. In 2006, when I crossed the stage with the first graduating class of Guelph Humber, my five-year-old daughter and three-year-old son were in the audience cheering me on. Later this week, my now 18-year-old daughter uh, will cross the stage at her high school graduation. So this is a particularly poignant moment for me to be giving this address. I am grateful for the invitation and I am so honored to be here with you. I want to talk to you today about champions. And I wrote this speech before the raps won. So I willed it into, I willed that championship into existence so that I would not have to write this, rewrite this speech. So being a champion has two definitions. And the first one is one who has defeated rivals in competition. And that kind of champion is being celebrated downtown today. But here in this room, I'm not talking about champions in the sense of winners of competitions like the Raptors. Rather, I am talking about the second definition of a champion. That is a person who fights for a cause or fights on behalf of another person. And people can be champions in different ways by being advocates, supporters, defenders, protectors, backers, and helpers. And I think it's fitting to start a speech about champions by addressing an important group of them who are here today. 
So first to the parents and the caregivers, the professors and the mentors of these graduates, thank you for being there for them during the formative time of their lives. As a mother and a mentor, I know very well the hopes and the fears and the very, very hard work that goes into helping young people succeed. So thank you. <clears throat> One of my favorite lines of poetry reads, you are the bows from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. And today we send these graduates forth into a new stage of adulthood and I know how proud you are of them. Now to the graduates. I am so excited that you will soon be my fellow Guelph Humber alumni. I hope to have the opportunity to meet some of you after the ceremony and hear your stories, just like you will have the opportunity to hear some of mine. My sincere and heartfelt congratulations to you all today. So, justice, kinesiology. What can I say that will be meaningful to such diverse group of graduates? I believe the answer comes from Mr. Rogers. And I was worried that most of you would not know who Mr. Rogers <laughs> is because you're too young. But Netflix released a documentary on his life last year. So I figured that there's like a 50-50 chance that at least some of you will have watched it while you were taking a well-deserved study break, or possibly, if you were like me, procrastinating on an assignment. I'm sorry, Leah Murdoch, for getting my speech too late. In case you don't know him, Mr. Rogers was a children's entertainer who had a penchant for cardigan sweaters and kindness. And Mr. Rogers often repeated a story about his mother's advice to him when he was down or afraid. She told him to look for the helpers. And she said, you will always find people helping. There are still so many caring people in the world. Your choice of program shows that you are the helpers. You are part of the caring people in the world. Some of you will serve individual clients or patients. Some of you will serve your communities more broadly. But your choice of degree points you to a helping profession. And that is a very honorable place to start. Helpers make great champions. So I want to tell you about some of my champions. I applied to Guelph Humber when I was in my mid-20s. And my first day of class, was my daughter's first day of daycare, and she was one years old at the time. My son was born on what turned out to be the first day of my second year at Guelph Humber. Uh, I did not make it to class that day. <laughs> and one of my professors emailed me to tell me that that was the best excuse he'd ever had in like 25 years of teaching for missing his class. So people give me a lot of credit for completing a joint degree diploma program followed by a law degree with two small children in tow. But I have to share the credit with my champions, a great number of whom were professors and members of the administration at Guelph Humber. The administration and professors here supported me in staying enrolled full time. They accommodated me without hesitation. I was never made to feel like an inconvenience when I had mom things that took me out of class. And I was never made to feel that I did not deserve to be here. When I did not have fixed daycare for my newborn son, the student life team at Guelph Humber recommended another fellow student who could babysit my son for a couple of hours at a time while I was in class. One of my professors told me without being asked that if I had to choose between missing her class or just bringing my newborn, to definitely just bring him to class. She told me about nursing her own newborn in between classes that she was teaching, and that gave me the confidence that it was possible 
to manage a baby, a toddler, and my academic career. When it came to my career path, I had a very important champion at Guelph Humber. My media law professor told me that I should go to law school. And though I had considered it for many years, uh, I thought that it was too late because I had kids. But she encouraged me to apply, and she told me that I would be good at it. And I don't think that I would have gone to law school if she had not seen something in me and told me so. So my professors and the administration of this university believed that a woman with children was a valued member of the Guelph Humber community who deserved the opportunity to succeed. In the years since I crossed this very stage, I have come to know with absolute certainty that that support changed my life. So most of you probably don't have children, I'm assuming, and you may be wondering how this relates to you. Here it is. Just how having children during my studies added an exciting wrinkle to my academic career and my professional life. It is inevitable that each of you will face challenges that affect your careers, whether it be related to your family, to sickness or disability, to discrimination, financial insecurity, or some other adversity. Sometimes adulting is hard. Some days will be harder than you imagined, and you may be full of doubt or overwhelmed with stress. But on those days, remember your champions. Remember that you have people in your corner and ask for their help their advice, and their support. You are not alone, and there is never any shame in asking for help when you need it. This is true no matter where you are in your career. You are worth it. You may have heard that if you do what you love and what you are passionate about, then work will hardly feel like work at all. Though I am very fortunate in nearly 10 years of legal practice to have two jobs that I love very much, very often work just feels like work. So try not to get too caught up in the idea that your success and happiness in life is dependent on landing a dream job. There is value in work that simply pays the bills and every job has something to teach you. Sometimes the lesson is as simple as, this is not the job that I want. And that can be great motivation to help you work hard to get to your next opportunity. So today is in part about a destination. You have achieved a huge accomplishment. But today is also about starting a new journey it's exciting to discover where your degree will take you. This journey will not necessarily be fast and it will not necessarily be linear, but that is just fine. Ultimately, I hope very much that each and every one of you finds work that is meaningful, feeds your passions and promotes your values. But you have not failed yourself if your first job or your fifth job is not what you thought it would be. In the meantime, every day, find a way to learn something. Always keep learning. When I'm hiring law students to work at my firm, the candidates that I look for are the ones who can tell me how they will learn doing routine, monotonous tasks. And believe me, as lawyers, there are a lot of those. The young lawyers who approach every task with a positive attitude and the desire to learn, the ones who treat everyone with respect, regardless of where they fall on the pay scale, and the ones who lift up their coworkers and do not treat them as competition, these are the new professionals that have my support and encouragement and the ones that I champion for advancement. So graduates, 
I know that you are anxious to walk across this stage and party like the Raptors. So here is what I hope that you will take away from my words today. Remember your champions and then pay it forward. From your first job after graduation to the last job before you retire, there will always be someone who needs help, support, mentorship, and encouragement. When you leave here today, be an advocate, be a supporter, a defender, a backer, a protector, be a helper. Be a champion for someone who needs a champion because that is how we change lives, like mine. So thank you for the invitation to be here. I'm delighted and congratulations, class of 2019. Rachel, thank you. That was really quite inspiring. <laughs> Graduands, the moment has arrived. Will the graduating class please stand? President and Vice-Chancellor Vaccarino, I have the honor to present to you these scholars who have fulfilled the statutory requirements laid down by the Senate of the University of Guelph that they may be admitted to their various and several degrees with all of the rights, privileges, and obligations appertaining thereto. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in the University of Guelph, I hereby accept you for admission to your various and several degrees with all the rights, the privileges, and the obligations appertaining thereto. President Whitaker, I have the honor to present to you these scholars who have fulfilled the academic requirements of Humber Institute of Technology and Advanced Learning in their respective programs, that they may be admitted to their various and several diplomas with all of the rights, privileges, and obligations appertaining thereto. I admit you to your various and several Humber Institute of Technology and Advanced Learning diplomas with all the rights, privileges, and obligations appertaining thereto. Will members of the graduating class please be seated? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is George Bragas. I'm the Assistant Vice Provost here at the University of Guelph Humber, and it is my honor today to be announcing the names of the graduates. Now, there will be three groups of students graduating uh, this afternoon. I would ask that you withhold your applause until the end of each group to ensure that each student's name can be heard clearly. At the end, though, of each group, we will expe expect some truly thunderous applause from family and friends. President and Vice Chancellor Vaccarino and President Whitaker, I have the honor to present to you these scholars from the University of Guelph Humber that they may be admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Applied Arts in Justice Studies General. O'Neill Barco. Stuart Blower, with distinction. Helen Casca, with distinction. Diane Clare. Tiara Fearon.
Craig Ferris, with distinction. Cindy Greenlaw, with distinction. Stephen Harper, with distinction. Tom Hickey, with distinction. Monsolano Hunter. Sandra Eskursky, with distinction. Andrew Johnson, with distinction. Aaron Kempling, with distinction. Tricia Cortacas, with distinction. Colin Lucas, with distinction. Crystal Malfera, with distinction. Roman Marchishan. Michael Millen. Haley Moorcroft. Rohan Valentine Morgan. Adrian Piccolo. Christine Ruklevich, with distinction and the Vice Provost Award winner. <laughs> Damien Stezenar, with distinction. David Taylor, with distinction. Jesse Weeks, with distinction. Elaine Wills. Topi Yusuf. Okay, and that was the BAA Justice Class of 2019. President and Vice Chancellor Vaccarino and President Whitaker, I have the honor to present to you these scholars from the University of Guelph Humber that they may be admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Applied Science and Justice Studies, Honors and Diploma in Community and Justice Services or Police Foundations. Faven Addis. Rafi Ahmed. Abdullah Ahmed. Jocelyn Allegria.
Delakshana and Theo Garaja. Shohan Tim Anthony. Harry Archibald. Colin Askett. Madeline Astolfi. Alana Obey with distinction. Cassidy Bajnoth. Niraj Balasu Bermanium. Corey Bashard. Andrew Berardi with distinction. Ali Barbaroglu. Sarah Bordage. Mariusz Braun. Linnell Briscoe. Shantae Brown with distinction. Stephanie Brum with distinction. Daniel Burke. Anthony Cabral. Camille Callalang with distinction. Alessia Kensian. Melissa Carranza. Cassandra Casali with distinction. Clyde Kayat with distinction. Karanjeet Chad. Zachary Chilman. Danielle Chin with distinction. Justin Chohan. Gianluca Chivacchino. Janessa Coburn. Noah Cotterington. Oh. Alana Coffin with distinction. Jason Commission with distinction. Marcello Correa. Gabrielle Christie. Tyler DeMello with distinction.
Sarah Denny with distinction. Krishma Dionarain. Jasneet Danoa. Jonathan DePiro. Shante Douglas with distinction. <laughs> Cassidy Dow. Hannah Drennan with distinction. Allison Dress. Daniela Duart. Kaylin Edwards. Amisha Anotti. Alessia Esposito. <laughs> Tiffany Ferruja, with distinction in the Vice Provost Award winner. <laughs> Ryan Fennick, with distinction. Selena Farinak with distinction. Antonio Ficocello. Layla Frere. Amandeep Guman. Alyssa Gibney. Christian Gifford. Samantha Gillingham. Emma Gomes with distinction. Yasmin Gordon with distinction. Sharon Graywall with distinction. Taryn Jote Graywall with distinction. Maria Grujic. Rakavi Gunasekaram. Abzal Hanif. Aisha Hassan with distinction. Katrina Hassan with distinction. Janiel Henry. <laughs> Arshdeep Hoti with distinction. Brian Wynn. Tin Wynn. Angela Habilius 
with distinction. Kevin Jakowski. Mariah Jarvis. Christine Jand. Weifang Jiang. Eliza Joseph. Kareem Cahill. <laughs> Anant Koshal. <laughs> Kusha Keiko Shravani with distinction. Elizabeth Maria Khan. Ranisha Kermi. Randy Rochelle Korn. Christine Krivik with distinction. Gaurav Kumar with distinction. Patricia Kuzma. Oh, yeah. Jake Laird with distinction. Sarah Wee Lam with distinction. Tyler Layler. Kirsten LaCour with distinction. Cody Lynn with distinction. Andy Liu. Emily McLean. <laughs> Chanel Lewis with distinction. <laughs> Jesse Magno Tremblay. Veda Maharaj. Sandra Macri. Grace Mackese. Amardeep Manak. <laughs> Frank Martins. Natalie Mazurkowitz. Alicia McCarthy with distinction. Fernando McTavish. Melissa Mercuri Amato with distinction. Rebecca Mahabir. Hamza Mohammed. Oh. 
Sarah Natasha Mohammed with distinction. Liam Morganti. Jonathan Moyano Vargas. Amy Murphy with distinction. Go, Amy. Madison Murphy. Constance Nansabuga. Justin No with distinction. Lisa Nguyen. Matush Nowich. Nixon Nuga. <laughs> Naveen Ohanis. <laughs> Isabella Pacheco. <laughs> Raj Patel. Jennifer Paul, with distinction. Eldine Patilia. Kelly Pimentel Suarez. Olivia Pommier with distinction. Rebecca Powers. Amandeep Poir. Rachel Rashkumar. Rhea Ramsen with distinction. Amandeep Randawa. Kirsten Robertson. Joel Robbins. Danielle Robinson. Jennifer Rosa with distinction. Jasmine Sahansra. Sharon Santhakumar. Tajay Scott. Kurt Seepersad. Jordan Shanks with distinction. Samantha Shepard with distinction. Aaron Schreier. <laughs> Serhi City. Jasmine Singh. <laughs> Alyssa Smith with distinction.
Rosiana Suarez with distinction. Dream Sopal. Megan Squires. Daniela Stevens with distinction. Gobishan Suresh Kumar. Olivia Sweet with distinction. Amit Tucker. Sandra Tassoni. Harmon Tandy. Daichani Thevaraja. Anupreet Kaur Tour with distinction. Alessia Trotta. Rohan Vijay Varghia. Valeria Vinueza. Susanna Wandis. Pavlene Wazir with distinction. Janae White. Justin Winners. Emily Witteveen with distinction. Mackenzie Wright with distinction. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the Justice Studies Class of 2019. <laughs> President and Vice Chancellor Vaccarino and President Whitaker. I have the honor to present to you these scholars from the University of Guelph Humber that they may be admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Applied Science in Kinesiology and the Diploma in Fitness and Health Promotion. <laughs> Joelle Abiyuan, with distinction. Litem Arokium. <laughs> Haley Azopardi with distinction. <laughs> Shailen Kane Bailey with distinction. Jillian Barber with distinction. Rohit Basra. Michelle Benudis with distinction.
Edona Barisha. Madeline Benetti. Stephanie Bombin. Jayon Jade Brady with distinction. Nicholas Brouse with distinction. Kristen Baikema with distinction. Jordan Cabral with distinction. Joseph Casoilo with distinction. Perry Carlisle Swindle with distinction. Hazen Castles. Veronica Colasanti. Karina Ann Cordy with distinction in the Vice Provost Award winner. <laughs> Megan Crow with distinction. Nicole Curdy. Gregory Dana with distinction. Karn Dart. Zara DeWood with distinction. Julia Derika with distinction. Kristen DiCesare. Maria Dimakua with distinction. Daniel Faria with distinction. McKenna Feltz. Jesse Saloum with distinction. Emily Fretz. Anton Gasataya. Imad Gulami Shaker. Savannah Goulart. Taylor Grinwis with distinction. Attila Haz. Nada Hassan with distinction. Carminder here. Chloe Hill. Melissa Holt. Andrea Hori.
Matthias Heik, with distinction. Yara Ehab, with distinction. Joseph in Sarah with distinction. Kira Jodouin. Serena Johal. Zina Karim. Mohammed Montasham Katia with distinction. Afia Khan with distinction. Michaela King. Victoria Legahit with distinction. Jamie Lambert with distinction. Hannah Latoza. Leticia Lopez. Darian Makins with distinction. Benjamin Mariano. Andrew Maroney with distinction. Brianna Marshall Simmons with distinction. Jennifer Martinez with distinction. Anthony Michael Martini with distinction. Emily Grace Ma. Eric McDonald with distinction. Megan McGill with distinction. Armando Medina. <laughs> Brittany Millette with distinction. George Miller. Anna Missick. William Cameron Malaski. Johnny Christopher Molina with distinction. Matthew Maloney with distinction. Nicole Mordu with distinction. Samantha Neves with distinction. <laughs> Vanessa Owusu Efrie. <laughs> Simran Panasar. Amanda Paulini. Joshua Pasquale.
David Vincent Pileggi with distinction. Boaz Joseph Pramod with distinction. Bruce Persanth with distinction. Olivia Putris. Andrea Quinones Perez. Suminder Rai. Abdul Rahim Safadi. Evan Sands. Brooke Savage with distinction. Wade Scott. Monica Sebasta. Carissa Shank with distinction. Timothy Spence with distinction. Ryan Spicer with distinction. Rachel Todd with distinction. Nicole Thomas with distinction. Danielle Torrey with distinction. Denny Tran with distinction. Cody Vicente. Nicholas Vitale with distinction. Brittany Wall. Haley Whitelock. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the Kinesiology Class of 2019. <laughs> President and Vice Chancellor Vaccarino. President Whitaker, I would ask that you confer the various and several degrees and diplomas on the graduates listed in the program, but unable to be present at this ceremony. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in the University of Guelph, I confer the various and several degrees in absentia on the graduates not present today. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer the various and several diplomas in absentia on the graduands not present today. Well done, graduates. Congratulations once again. Well, what a great day. Again, uh, congratulations to all of you. Now, following convocation, a light reception will be held for our new alumni and their guests in the foyer here.
This, of course, is an opportunity to congratulate our new members of the alumni family, and we do very much hope that you all can join us. And at this point, as tradition has it, the final words come from me, and that is, convocation is dismissed. Well done. <laughs> <laughs>